Just three years ago, he was still playing cricket in the bush. This week, he was named to spearhead Australia's attack in the upcoming Ashes series. But Philip Hughes isn't just any player. At only 20, he's already been compared to some of the greats. You're about to meet a young man facing huge expectations, but taking it all in his stride. Question, what does it take to make a champion? Answer, bananas, heaps of them. 12 hectares, in fact. And Australian cricket's newest opening batsman, Philip Hughes, collects his bananas like he collects runs. A quick strike and bountiful reward. And always with Dad by his side. Oh. <laughs> Phil, do you reckon you'd be where you are in cricket if it wasn't for your mum and dad? No, definitely not. All the cricket carnivals and dad have to take off five, six days in a row off work just to cut me around. You know, they sit in the car for five hours. It's been great. And, um, it's all worthwhile. Yeah. You must be so proud, huh? Very proud of him. Yeah. But he was, he always thanked us. You know, when we get back home, he always, last thing he'd said was thanks dad, you know, so, so that was really appreciative. I'll, I'll be in flip. But it was here in the family backyard where young Philip really learnt his trade, including an encyclopedic knowledge of the rules. If you hit the close on, um, it was 25 runs, automatic. If you hit it on the full, it was 50. <laughs> so that's what we, we always used to aim at that. But we had the side fence here. Um, it was two, two runs on the bounce or roll. Uh, on the full was four. Have a look at the dents. Yeah, there's a few dents along the side. <laughs> the back fence was four. You were excelling at nine, playing in the under 12s. By 12, you were playing 16 year olds. At 16, you were playing 19 year olds. How has that helped you? I've always been the youngest and playing guys that are always older. Um, they, don't, they don't step back on you. They, they'll come on the front foot with you and they'll uh, give it to you. And that's probably gave me a lot of confidence. Barely 20, he's still taking on the big boys, only now on the world stage. In February, he replaced the mighty Matthew Hayden as opening batsman on tour against South Africa. I received my bag of green off Ricky Ponting on the morning of the first game. You know, it was unbelievable and uh, I was actually shaking <laughs> when I received it and I, I was speechless. Oh, I just flopped on the bed, I did. And I was very excited for him. Um, we were over the moon, actually, and we just... <laughs> then we started to jump up and down and it was just wonderful. And then he stepped out to bat. You're in Joburg in, in South Africa. Your mum and dad are over there on their very first overseas trip. Uh, the whole town of Maxville is, is, is rooting for you. The pub's chock a block and you get a duck. Oh no! What a way to start! How did you feel? It couldn't have happened any worse. Desperate moment I don't know how to describe it. You know, there was we hurt just, and disappointment. And, we just sat there you know, and we swallowed. We felt for him, but I mean, I, I took the view then, let's cricket, you know? The, the, the Yarpies were merciless in their, in their sledging on you, because they were saying that you were no Matthew Hayden. They, they didn't miss. Uh, it was actually after that first game, they come out and said a lot of things about, you know, I run away from the ball and he's no Matthew Hayden or Langer or, or this type of thing. So that made me have, very hungry for the second test. He sure was. He made the South Africans eat their words. In the next test, not only did he smash 115 in the first innings, but he backed that up with 160 in the second, becoming the youngest cricketer in history to hit two centuries in the same test. Justin Langer calls him the smiling assassin. Do you like that? I love it. <laughs> I love it. The smiling assassin just kept smiling at them. Definitely, uh, you know, that's all I could do, walk down and smile at him. <laughs> Back in the northern New South Wales town of Maxville, it was a very Aussie homecoming for this hometown hero. In Maxville, there's no doubt this modest young man could be Bradman in the making. Probably couldn't have been done without the support of our community, so that's, that's wonderful that they can join in and, and now watch him on television, you know. Batter or bowler? Both? Yeah, both. Beautiful. But it's not all one-way adoration. 
This bloke will never forget where he's come from. Hi everyone, it's always great to be back. Uh, and the Maxville ex-servicemans, the club that sponsored him throughout his boyhood cricket, he's now established the Philip Hughes Scholarship for Country Boys to train in the big smoke. It's not easy from the country and I figured that out and, you know, to get back to the community, um, you know, I just, I'm that pumped about it and I'm sure we'll go to plan. What about this one? How prophetic is that these days after having already broken two Bradman records? Watch out, Bradman. Yeah, that was, I think, God. <laughs> cliffing the paper about... Because you... Because you... you been about eight, nine years ago, that. Oh, yeah, well, it's, it's the year 2000, so you, I think you were 11. Oh, wow. Later, in the dining room... Cheers, everyone. ...time out to dine out on Philip's achievements... ...in the Aussie team. ...with Dad Greg, Sister Megan, and his very down-to-earth mum, Virginia. You, you prefer Philip than Phil? Yes, I do, Mike. Yes, um, with two L's. <laughs> I never... No, I've never been able to call him Phil, so it's always Philip. Different tones of Philip. Philip, Philip. Philip. Look at me. Look, at me. Look at me. <laughs> What's it like having a famous brother? Yeah, it's different, but, you know, he's always been my brother. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool to have him on the TV and the papers <laughs> and everything. And at school, a few more people talk to me, but, um, nah. It's, he, he'll always be Philip to me, and, yeah, I love him heaps. So oh, that's I'm lovely. I'm very proud of him, so, yeah. On the floor of the back fence was six. Uh, we had the chook pen. Uh, that was six on the four, on the rolls, uh, on the bounce was four. We had this little garden patch here that was, uh, that was two on the bounce. In a year or so, he could be earning up to half a million dollars a year. Probably a household face in Australia and, and famous in other countries. Could all of that change him? No, no, I don't believe so, you know. He's there to play cricket, I, I, I don't think it'll change him, you know. Because of his foundation too? Yes. His family? Yeah. 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 So the boys give you a hard time over your, over your diamonds and your ears? The country boys? Yeah, when I get back they, there's a bit of cheek there. Yeah. What do they say? Oh, turn into the city boy now, have you? <laughs> That's one thing he reckons he'll never turn into. Big paydays may be just around the corner, but the land is in his heart and soul. If all goes to plan, um, that's what I want to do with my dad, is to hopefully get a pretty big property and get Angus stud cattle on there. Mm. And, you know, that's my dream, the next little dream. His style may not please the purists, but it's brutally effective. His boyish looks masking his ferocious intensity and concentration. Greg, if you had to sum up what that something special is that Philip has, what would you say? Toughness, um, dedication. And his smile. Well, we know where he gets that from, Mother, don't we? <laughs> the Steve Ball medalist for 2008, 2009. All through his career, Philip Hughes has been two and three years ahead of his age group, always leapfrogging the rest. And now, he's Hughes right Johnson. where he wants to be. Massive. Would maybe the ultimate dream be to captain Australia? Oh, definitely, you know, growing up as a kid, you know, you, you love to, but, uh, you know, I'm happy playing, you know, it's just a great thing, I'm happy where I am. Age of 20, um, couldn't be happier, to be honest, but, you know, hopefully, it may be one day, but, you know, it's something I haven't thought about, yeah. yeah. Well, Philip, good luck, and keep smiling at him. Definitely, thank you, thanks a lot. Yeah, we had buckets around, we had signs on the fence, which aren't there now, and if you hit the sign, they'd be automatically 50 or 100, depending on which one you'd hit. Um, also, if you hit it over the fence, it was just six and out. So if you had six to win, you'd just have a bit of a whack, and it didn't matter if you got out. And Philip has already put the palms on notice while playing county cricket in England. His run rate has been greater than Don Bradman's during his first tour there in 1930.